Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be filming a full set, including all the prep that I do to prevent lifting. So the first thing as you can see is I'm basically just removing any existing polish using a lint-free wipe as well as uh, pure acetone, pressing onto that nail, wiggling it around, and then basically removing that polish. The next thing I do is spray with my CJP prep spray, not to just disinfect, not only to disinfect the nails, but also to add a little bit of lubrication so that I can scrape those nails easily. Before I carry on, I would like to ask y'all to please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. So moving on to nails, I am basically using my super scraper from Glitter Planet, which is basically just like a cuticle pusher that helps clean all the dead skin off that nail plate, as well as closer to that cuticle area. So one thing I want to mention is that I am not being aggressive on that nail whatsoever. It's just that this tool is quite um, sharp, so it basically removes all that dead skin. And as you can see, all that dead skin that is coming off, imagine if I didn't do this step. When we come back to apply our acrylic, it's basically going to... Um, allow for lifting so you want to make sure you do not skip this if you don't have the super scraper at least just push back your cuticle so you can expose the new growth after i have done that i will basically just cut all the dead skin so i'm going to use my cuticle nippers that i also got from glitter planet and as you can see right now i am just removing the hanging bits of that skin so you don't want to you don't want to trim any life tissue all you want to trim is the dead skin that looks dead <laughs> and that it kind of lost color basically so that's how you know that you've got dead skin off Again, if you're scared of doing this, I would recommend that you just use the buffing bit. So the thing that you put on your e-file and then it will also help you remove that dead skin. I will be posting future videos on how to use that. So please stay tuned for that. But I like to do this step because it just makes the nails look a lot more clean when I trim all that dead skin off. Now I'm going in with extra prep work, which I am using the Outwood Industries Skiver bit. And I'm going to be using that parallel to the nail plate, removing any excess dead skin that is very close to that cuticle area. And also because we've, nip we've nipped off the excess skin or the excess cuticle, we have exposed additional um, you know, dead skin that is underneath that cuticle. And I'm basically just using the skiver bit to um, remove all that dead skin. Now I'm using the 180 sanding band which is also equivalent to the fine sanding band and I'm just using the belly of that sanding band to remove all the shine from the nail plate and using the tip of the sanding band to go closer to that cuticle area as well as the sidewalls of the nail and that's to ensure that everything is buffed and that you do not get lifting. So when you leave the nail shiny, as you see before I do this, is basically just allowing all that oils to sink in, which will inhibit your acrylic to adhere and therefore you get lifting. But anyway, after I've done that, I basically just apply my tips and I'm using my KDS glue and my Salon Pro tips from Glitter Planet. And I will only be using those on the middle, I think, index and the pinky as well as the thumb, I think, I'm not sure. But I will also be using my easy tips from Glitter Planet. But anyway, regardless with any tips that you use, you wanna make sure that the wings of those tips, so the sidewalls of the tips, fit exactly to the sidewalls of your nail. Because if you use a tip smaller than that, it will basically just pop off or if you use a bigger one, it will just lift. So you want to make sure that if you don't have the right size, like for example with this, it's slightly bigger. I trimmed off the sides or the wings of my tips to make it fit exactly to that nail plate. And then just apply it closer to that tip. And as you can see, boom, those sidewalls fit exactly to the sidewalls of the nail. But anyway, once I apply all the tips, I will just trim to the desired length. So 
So my friend did not want her nails to be any shorter than that. So what I did was I only trimmed the easy tips, which are the clear tips, and left the Salon Pro, which are the natural nail tips as they are. And now I'm using my all-time favorite 100-180 um, hand file from Deluxe, and I'm just going to reshape those nails, just making sure that I get the sidewalls flush to that nail, to the natural nail. And what I'm going for here is a tapered square. So I'm not going to do a lot of filing, and when you do tapered square, you want to keep that file parallel to the nail. That way you get it nice and straight. And then once I tackle doing the sidewalls, I will flip my friend's hands. So you want to flip your client's hand so you can get a better view from, I think you'd call it their view. So you can just neaten up the tips to make them nice and straight. Once you have gotten your desired shape, you want to apply your primer or your dehydrator. In my case, I'm using the 1.2 monomer from CJP, which is primerless and HEMA-free, which means that it doesn't have the chemical, which is HEMA, that a lot of people are sensitive to, and they also can get allergic reactions. So I highly recommend you guys try this monomer because it works amazing. And the setting time for this monomer is absolutely insane. So as you can see, I'm having a lot of time working on that bead. I'm not worried and you know, like panicking about this bead drying too quick because the monomer just allows me to play with that product, getting it to wherever I want it to be. But again, if you're using a different monomer, please make sure you apply your primer. But anyway, what I'm doing now is I am using a more from CJP and I'm just going to apply that on the entire nails that have the natural tips. So I'm just going to let you watch as um, I apply the product because I recently did a video on the Apex and I also got a recommendation from a kind viewer saying she wanted a full in-depth video of me applying acrylic so I will explain a little bit in this video and then I will do a dedicated video on you know how to do nails for beginners but as you can see I've applied my first bead in the middle of where the natural nails and the tip meet and then I'm just walking that bead towards the tip I am basically working with a medium or let's say large size bead and when I'm walking it down I'm basically again just patting and pushing and pulling basically so again you want to press that product into place neaten up the sides and then i basically just pat and pull but as you can see with the second bead that i applied closer to that cuticle area i'm basically just brushing it towards the rest of the nail because i already have that bulk that i want that is closer to the tip I hope I'm making sense and I'm not just rambling, but as I said before, I will be doing a dedicated video on acrylic application. But one thing I really want to mention is that when you apply your bead that is closer to the cuticle, you want to make sure you don't put it too, too close because if you do, it's automatically going to flood. So what I would recommend you doing is that uh, you apply your bead closer to that cuticle area and then just use the tip of your brush to push that bead closer to that cuticle area and neaten it up. That way you don't get any flooding and you don't get lifting. 
So I'll let you guys watch so that you can get a better view of what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And again, I will be doing a video very soon on proper acrylic application. Now moving on to the clear tips, I am basically just using um, CJP coconut milk and my clear acrylic from Nail Nails and I'm just going to create an ombre. So using those two colors, I have, I have demonstrated this multiple times. So what I do is I dip my brush into my monomer, into the clear first and then a little bit on the um, white and then I just apply it onto the nail and then just wiggle my brush around to get that um, coverage that I want. You don't want to play with the colors too too much because if you keep on brushing a lot and just moving that product around it's not going to marble. They are more likely to blend and mix 
and then that way you're just going to get one solid color as you can see with the ring finger i kind of played a lot with it so it just you can just see the white mainly but you'll see in the rest of the nails i'm basically just trying my best to not mix those colors too much because i just wanted the white to peek through only on like some places so i'll let you guys watch so you can see what i'm doing So once I'm happy with the marble, I basically just go in with a very wet bead of clear acrylic and then just brush that onto the nail and then I'm going to be applying some flakes. So these are chrome flakes that I got from Glitter Planet. I will leave them linked down below and I'm basically just placing them randomly onto that nail. The nails that have the marble only. So now what I'm doing is again, I'm placing a very wet bead, brushing it onto the entire nails that have the marble. And now I'm just applying, I think they're called Mylar sheets. I'm not too sure. Again, I will try and leave it linked down below, but these are a little bit more opaque than those flakes because we wanted an effect that has some of them which are quite transparent and some that are very opaque. So we decided to apply those two together and I think it gave it such a beautiful effect. Now I'm using more flakes, but this time this is the gold flakes that I get off my craft store. I will try to leave them linked down below. I think I've seen them on Amazon for quite a good deal. So again, before I apply them, I basically just use clear acrylic, wet beads, and then just place it wherever I'm going to place my flakes. 
and then just pick them up using my brush before i pick them up i actually like break them up into pieces like the sizes that i want and then just again pick them up with the tip of my brush and place them onto that wet acrylic So once you're happy with the placement of the flakes and everything, you want to come in with your clear acrylic to encapsulate all of the nails. I mainly just encapsulate the ones that have the flakes and the marble. I do not do it to the pink ones, which are Amore, just because Amore is a core powder from CJP that does not require any um, encapsulation. And I also build my apex with it, so no need to add more product. But when you come to encapsulate nails that have anything inside the nails, you want to make sure that you cover the entirety of that nail as well as building a good apex. So your stress area is one of the most important things you have to focus on when you come to apply acrylics and I actually have a dedicated video for that. So I will leave it linked down below as well as leave a card for you guys to watch in case you're interested. I will also be doing a um, separate dedicated video on, again, applying acry acrylic nails as well as placing your apex in the right place. So stay tuned for that if you are interested. So once the nails have dried, I come in with my hand file again to redefine that shape. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically just getting that shape back to what it was because when you apply acrylic, no matter how much you brush the side, 
the sides of the nails you are kind of going to change the shape anyway because acrylic adds bulk and when you add that bulk it kind of just disturbs the shape a little bit it rounds off the edges so you always always want to make sure you come in back again with your hand file to redefine that shape and get it looking nice and crisp This is how I get the tips looking nice and straight. I know I had a comment on one of my videos saying how you can get them looking nice and straight and that's exactly what I do. I just flip the client's hands from their view to make sure I get a better look at those tips and then just file as much as I need to get those tips looking nice and straight. Now I'm coming in with my smooth top medium drill bit from Glitter Planet and I'm going to just shape all of the nails. Well, actually it's more smoothing out the surfaces of the nails, not shaping it. I don't know why I said that, but it's fine. Um, you can shape the nails as well if you want to. But what I'm doing is just smoothing out the surface, getting rid of any imperfections, any lumps or bumps that may have, um, you know, that may be on the nail. So what I like about this bit is that it's ceramic so that it doesn't generate that much heat and it also is a safety bit so you can go as close as you want to that cuticle area um, without having to cut your client's um, cuticles. And when I use this bit, I use it on a number nine on my drill. So I use it quite fast because it's safe. It's a safety bit. So I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, cutting my client's cuticles or catching onto the skin um, because it's a safety bit. But then I will come in with my carbide fine drill bit, which is exposed kind of like it doesn't have a safety bit. And when I use that, I only use it closer to that cuticle area as you see me doing now. And I slow down my speed to a number four or five, maybe sometimes six, but I would say stick between four and five so that you do not catch that skin and basically just make your client bleed. So what I'm doing here is I'm going closer to that cuticle area, sealing that acrylic onto the natural nail, making sure there is no gap whatsoever between the, um, acrylic and the nail you want it to be as flush as you can to that um, natural nail because if you don't do this properly you are more likely to get lifting because there's going to be a gap in between the nail so the extension and the natural nails which will basically allow your client's hair to get stuck to it and you know when they wash their hands and especially now with the pandemic washing our hands a lot you know moisturizing hand sanitizer it's more likely going to um, get lifted so you want to make sure you do not skip this bit So once I'm done filing the nails, I come in with my 180 buffing block that I actually got from eBay and they work incredibly well because you get the smooth um, surface and kind of the rough edge which kind of just removes all these scratches. So I highly recommend that. I will try and find it as well and leave it linked down below because I found it on several websites that sell it for quite expensive. So from eBay you can get quite a lot for a good deal. But anyway, I basically just buff those nails to get rid of all these scratches. And then once I have buffed them, I will um, wipe all the nails with an alcohol wipe to get rid of all the debris as well as, you know, the dust and anything that may be underneath those cuticles or the nails or whatever. You just want them clean. And then after that, I will come in with my bling application. And for most of these clips, you will be seeing my fat head. You'll see my hair all over the place, like my bun 
looks so messy as well so i really apologize for that um but yeah so you're not going to see much of this application method thing but what i'm basically using is my kiara sky base glue and my gem picker that i got there you go that's what i'm talking about my gem picker that i got from amazon and then i spray with my mia secret gel resin activator to make sure that gel resin dries quicker so that i can come in and apply my top coat So now I'm going to be top coating all of the nails using Super Gloss from Glitter Planet and this is my favorite top coat. I also apply like at the back of the nail tip on the nails that are transparent just because if you apply um, top coat from the back it will be even more transparent. It gives it that glassy look if you like. So what I'm doing is I'm just applying that on all of the nails and then cure for 60 seconds in my lamp. Alrighty everyone, so this is the final look. I really really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel, and I shall see you in my next video.